Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're kind of filming two for one. And what I mean by that is I actually have a project to do on the truck. I think you will have already seen that video. But in the meantime, for us to get working on the truck, I need to get the SS out of here. And if you guys can see, I don't know if this is going to be picking up on the screen, but yeah, you guys can see how dirty this car is. So uh, you guys know that we're going to be trying to list this car very soon. But before we list it, we have a number of things to do, and that includes changing the oil, changing the battery potentially, and then washing it. So we're going to kind of be doing all three of that today. And uh, yeah, so we already showed you how dirty it is. And uh, I hate to say it, the inspection sticker I got was back in February. It is now June. I haven't even put the inspection sticker on. So it just kind of gives you an indication of how little I am driving this car. So, uh, but yeah, so today what we're going to do is try to get it started. I actually had to move it yesterday and it barely wanted to start. So, so let's get in it, try to start it. And if it doesn't, I do have that jump pack from NOCO. Uh, we'll use that if we need to. Oh, it actually started. But we're going to get a whole bunch of weird errors. Yeah, like, that's real dim. I don't think I can... Oh, it is turned down, but... Yeah, I was getting errors about service to build track. You know, there's all kinds of other stuff. There's an error about check, you know, tire pressure that's on the HUD tire pressure low so there's another problem is uh, air pressure on the driver's rear tire uh, but yeah let's see service front camera well that's different again I, I think most of these are gonna be related to the car just sitting here so we only have 13.6 volts guys I don't trust that at all I bet you it's lower I'm gonna put a jump pack on this and uh, try to start it again to see if it starts because like we said this thing really did not want to start and honestly if I'd filmed this yesterday it really didn't want to start. I had to hold the start button with the brake pedal, you know, engaged a really long time before it finally did kick over. All right, so I bought this a few months ago because when I was having issues with the Corvette, I have not used it on the SS. So yeah, I've actually had this sitting in the back of the SS for a real long time because I thought we were going to have issues, but like I charged the battery once. It seemed to be fine, but you know, let's just turn this thing on and see what it says. All right, right off the bat, I've noticed the gauge cluster is brighter, so let's... There you go. That seemed to start up real quick. Let's go back to the menu and see, uh, see what it's going to say. Yeah, we know. Air pressure, 13.3. Yeah, so that was at 13.7 a couple minutes ago, now it's 13.4. So yeah, I definitely think we've got some issue with the battery, because guys... Today it is 2024. This is a 2014. This is the factory battery, the factory EGM from Australia. So yeah, I'm totally not worried about that, but I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have issues, you know, in the future trying to sell it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the battery because like I said, it's only a 13.5. It should be at 14, 14.2. It will probably eventually get up there with the alternator working, but really all we're doing is using the alternator to try to bring the battery back up to its nominal charge. So Yes, I can charge it overnight. It will charge it back. But again, you let the car sit for a while and the factory battery just wants to die. So, and another thing, the camera air disappeared after we put more voltage with the jump back on. So let's go take that off and uh, move this. We can go work on the truck. All right, guys, the battery has finally arrived. You guys might be wondering, what do you mean it's arrived? Well, I actually ended up finding a battery on Amazon. And as you guys can see, this is a... AC Delco battery. It's an H6 and it is 760 cold cranking apps and it's a 48 size. 48R. So it's an H6 48R or R48. However, those numbers are associated and uh, it's an AGM. I think I may have said that. So yeah, this will be a direct replacement for the factory battery. And you guys might be wondering, well, why did you end up with a Amazon battery or a AC Delco battery on Amazon? Well, that is just due to the fact that Walmart doesn't carry this battery. Like, it's like a national shortage right now. I looked online, they don't have it. They have a lead acid battery, but this car needs an AGM because it is inside, it is in the back. So, you know, it specifies an AGM. So, and so that's kind of how we ended up shopping online for a battery because if you guys look at the Interstate, AutoZone, Walmart, 
Oh, there's uh, Motorcraft. I think there's another one out there. But if you guys look at all their H6 AGM batteries, they are literally the same battery, same cranking apps, cold cranking apps, all that, same specs. Literally all have the same case. They just have different stickers on them. Now the price difference between Walmart and AutoZone was almost $100. You guys will know that we've got a, I think it's Ready Start or Ever Start, whatever the Walmart brand is. We've got a Walmart battery in there and I've had no issues with it. So if you guys are shopping for a battery and you're not in a pinch, shop around. And that's what we ended up doing. So the battery is dead in the, in the SS. I've been using my jump pack to get it started. So like I said, Walmart was out of stock and all the other batteries were again, a hundred plus dollars more. And then I found this AC Delco battery on Amazon for literally the same price as the Walmart battery. It's like, well, let's have the Walmart price but for an AC Delco part. And that way we're keeping it a GM battery. So we're taking out an AC Delco and we're putting in an AC Delco. So, so yeah, this battery was like 175 pre-tax and all that and free shipping because it's Amazon. So yeah, it's 175 to the door, say 180. And uh, yes, and the Walmart would have been the same price, but like I said, they are on national back order. So yeah, here is the GM part number. It's 888-64541. It's an AGM, like I said, and it's the 760 cranking apps. All right, guys, to get this battery out, we're gonna have to take this panel off. There is a clip here. There's also a clip up here, you guys can see that. And basically, we're just gonna pull down and make sure that we can get everything out. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much good to go on that side. We're also gonna have to pull these out. All right guys, we're also gonna need to pull out the back clip. I thought there was two bolts holding this in, but honestly, all that that is is the trunk release. Don't take that off, not needed. All you have to do is pull up on this. There's four tabs on the bottom and it'll pull out. It's just uh, no, you know those, those metal retaining clips. So pull that up, it comes out. Take the, there's those, net screw things on both sides on the driver and passenger took those out and we're good and then i simply just pulled back on the panel and we've got plenty of room here to release the battery and get this out of here all right the negative and positive terminals are both 10 millimeters the seat belt for better lack of term is a 13 millimeter you will need an extension to get back there so we're going to take that off next and then the vent you just simply pull off then we're going to have to plug the front up here because there's actually another hole here. We'll need to plug that off because the vent only needs to come out one side of the battery. So, oh, and also don't forget this side mount, this triangle shaped mount. Yeah, that's a 13 millimeter as well. All right, that should be able to allow us to move it. Okay, cool. Yep. Let's get this old battery out. We'll get the new one in. All right, we got both mounts installed. We got the little triangular one down here. We got the, let's call it a seat belt mount as well. Like I said, 13 millimeters on top and bottom there. And now we're basically ready to hook up the cable. So take off your terminal covers. Go ahead, hook up your negative side first. And uh, that should be about it. Get that on there nice and solid. Then over here on the back half of the battery, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna put the vent in and that vent does push outside. All right, that side is in. And over here on the front, we're gonna to wanna to take this little red cap. You guys can't see it, but this little red nub, take that little red nub from the cap. You're gonna find the hole in the front and plug it. It uh, doesn't seem to get done a lot, but that is pretty critical because you don't want the battery venting out the front. You only want it venting out the back like it is. So there you go. That is the vents. That's the mounts. Let's go ahead and get this front on here and I uh, hope this sparks. Okay, yep, it does. All right, we got both terminals tightened down. Both lugs are good to go. All right, guys, let's fire up the car with the new battery. <laughs> that fired up pretty quick. We don't have any air messages. We had a crap ton with the old battery, probably like three or four camera stuff like that just trying to find the all right 13.4 volts that'll probably have to be charged up 
That is one thing I did see some complaints about the Amazon batteries was the fact that they may have sat for a while, you know, on the Amazon shelf or wherever these things are coming from. And so you might have to charge it. So I think I'm gonna hook up my battery tender, just let that thing charge overnight. And guys, we've already got jumped up to 13.6, so. And one more thing, if you guys wanna get rid of a battery, well, yeah, in our case, we've pretty much got a dead battery. If you guys go to O'Reilly's, they will take core batteries, even though you didn't pay for it. They'll give you a couple of dollars. I don't know how much it is per battery, but we're probably gonna take that one over. And I've got another racing battery somewhere around here. Probably take that one over too. Just do the fact that you can get some money back for it. And I don't really wanna to have to go all the way to the county dump landfill to recycle a lead acid battery or an AGM because it's like an hour drive each way. And uh, if I can drive five minutes, get a couple bucks, saves me a bunch of time. So just an FYI, if you guys do have dead batteries and you've bought them somewhere, they didn't charge a core for it. All right guys, we're gonna start the oil change on the SS and nothing too crazy here. Did get the car up on my race ramp so we got access to the oil underneath and uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be about it. I'm gonna be emptying the catch can like we just did on the Silverado. All right guys, I got all of the bolts and the belly pan off. You guys can see that over there. I do sell those on our website. Don't forget about that. Check that out here. And uh, I sold a few of these, but I still have a few left. And uh, you know, while I still have the SS, I can still make them with a template. So we do have those on the website. All right, you're gonna wanna break the oil pan bolt loose. It's a 15 millimeter. And uh, since I'm the last person that changed oil in this car, it wasn't super tight. So uh, you know, I was able to break that off with just a standard wrench. So yeah, probably gonna get oil on I me mean, is the way of such things. But all right, there you go. And uh, hey, we made it all into the pan. So let me clean up this bolt and we will let this drain for the next 20, 30 minutes. And we should be ready for the next step of getting the filter off, close this up and then start putting new oil in it. All right guys, while the oil is draining, I've decided to take the beauty cover off here. This, I forgot where I got it. I think it was from Rotofab. So that radiator cover basically took that off to get access to our oil catch can. This is from Elite Engineering as well. This is actually the same that we have on the Silverado. Uh, I just took the one off the Corvette and adapted it to uh, fit into the truck. So let's see how much stuff's in here. Oh, there is pretty much nothing in here. <laughs> I was just expecting something, but yeah, there really ain't much anything in here. I may have drained this out in the last few months. I kind of remember doing that, but I just wanted to double check. So this is pretty much empty. I'll clean it out, put it back on, and that's done for the top end. Then we're still waiting for that oil to drain down there. All right, guys, we've used our oil filter removal tool and we have loosened the filter up. So you guys actually can see it draining. And uh, I just used this in the ZR2 video a couple weeks ago. And uh, yeah, so it works on the SS as well. All right, guys, we've got the drain plug installed and we also got the new oil filter installed. I also checked the old filter to the new filter because you guys know we ran into that little bit of difference on the Silverado. And uh, these filters looked exactly the same. I didn't check the part number, but you know, the internals, the how it was made, all looked 100% the same. All right, so you can see we have three five quart jugs here. Obviously we only need eight quarts for the SS, but one of these has two quarts, the other two are full. So we're gonna end up doing five, six, seven, and the last quart will come out of the third one, so. All right, so nothing too crazy here. Just slowly pour your oil in and uh, yeah, so I should tell you this is 5W30 from Mobile One and uh, it's what I've always used on this engine. It's what I've always used on all of my LS engines. Well, except for the new uh, built motor we have in the Corvette. I have been using Valvoline on that one. So, all right, so that's the end of the first two quarts. We got six more to go. We'll wrap this up by showing you how to reset the oil monitoring system inside the car. Go to vehicle information. We're going to want to find the oil. All right, you want it set clear. So that's going to be this button on the end of the cruise control. Hit that, scroll up, hit yes. There you go. You don't use the turn stock button, use the set clear button. So 
uh, set clear, go up to yes, hit the end button again, and that will reset it to 100%. All right, you guys just heard us start the car. I checked the oil filter, I checked the drain plug. We don't have any oil dripping down or anything, so we go ahead and put the belly pan back on and we'll be 100% done with this oil change. Right, guys we just wrapped up cleaning up the SS and guys this car came out so freaking clean uh, I know I detailed it last year but you know looking at it this year <laughs> it was super dirty uh, I haven't washed this car in a while and I was daily driving it for about three months about a year ago so you know, I don't know if I've cleaned it up since then. I probably have. I've probably watched it at least once, but yeah, all the dust, grime, fallout, iron, all that stuff's gone. And so, yeah, the car cleaned up really, really well. And, uh, you know, the wheels look pretty good. I didn't dry those. I should have dried them, but that's all right. But I did clean them, clean the calipers, and uh, those are looking mint like they always do. And, uh, yeah. So that is pretty much a wrap on washing the SS. All right, guys, the last thing I want to check before we finish up this video is actually the intercooler pump. I've had issues with the relay from Magnuson. I've had to replace it a couple times. Just want to make sure that thing is good to go. And so yeah, I think that's pretty much gonna be it for this video, just kind of us going over the last few projects we want, make sure the car's ready to go, and uh, yeah, so I will be posting this probably tomorrow. And uh, so I'm gonna reach out to bring a trailer, submit the car through there, see what they say. They might actually be six to eight weeks out on posting cars, so I'm just not sure I wanna wait that long. So I think what I'm gonna do is I will post it locally, so like Craigslist, Facebook, all that. And uh, we might end up taking this to Streetcar Takeover and putting a for sale sign on it. That is next weekend here in Charlotte. I haven't registered for it. I don't know what the weather is going to be like. So I will uh, potentially do that. But if we do take it to Streetcar Takeover, I am not racing it. Strictly go there, park it with the car show, put a for sale sign on it, and uh, see what it does. So, yeah. That's kind of the short-term sale plan. All right, guys, I had a different ending on this video, so we're kind of refilming it, and that is because, if you guys can see, we are standing in the middle of the main bay, and you notice something might be missing. Well, as of the end of the video, I'd finished editing it, took a couple pictures of it, 
put a real bland description of it, threw it up on Facebook. You guys can see that here. And then if you see this updated picture here, you will see it, it sold. So I listed the car Friday night and uh, about 9 p.m. Guy messaged me about 10 p.m. on Friday night saying he wanted to buy the car. So the whole plan of me throwing it on Facebook, kind of going to wait until Monday to, uh, you know, contact, bring a trailer. Well, yeah, that took all of one hour for me to sell the car. So wasn't totally expected, but you know what? Car's gone, as you guys can see. Hell, I even have the tag over there. But yeah, so I wasn't expecting to sell the car in an hour, but that's what ended up happening. So the buyer was actually from Tennessee. He messaged me. We met uh, kind of in the middle. We met in uh, up in Morganton, North Carolina. So it's kind of on the mountains off Interstate 40. And uh, yeah, so he brought a certified check, you know, with the, with the bank. He, he went to his bank Saturday. I called his bank verified funds. So we were good there. Uh, you know, I had the title, I've had the title, this car's been paid off for years. And uh, yeah, we met up in Morganton, signed the title, we signed a bill of sale, and uh, that's that. So he drove away in the SS, I drove home in the ZR2, and uh, yeah, so like I said, I did not expect this to happen in the course of a couple hours. So yeah, so I listed it 9 p.m. Friday, the car was gone noon the next day. So uh, yeah, not even a full 24 hours. Hell, maybe like 15 hours, something like that, from listing to, to getting a check, writing the bill of sale, and the guy taking off with the car. So, but yeah, so I actually need to go turn that plate in. I've already canceled insurance on it, and uh, yeah, so crazy ending for this saga, this project, whatever we want to call it. You know, I've had the car just over 10 years, and uh, I sold it in an hour. And uh, the new buyer, Brad, he reached out to me after he got home because I think he had like a two or three hour drive home. Said he really enjoyed the car, it was well put together, it was tuned really well, so big shout out to PCM North Carolina, out to Alvin. He said the tune is real good, well sorted, the brakes were working good, everything worked good. And uh, you know, like I said, the car only had 21,000 miles on it, so not too bad of a you know deal on that. And uh, yeah, so you guys might be wondering what is next. Guys, I absolutely have no idea. I was kind of looking at some Cadillac CT5Vs, but I am down to two cars. The last time I had two cars was over 15 years ago because I had the Duramax, the G8, and the Corvette. Now we just have the Silverado and the Corvette, so kind of crazy that we're down to two cars. It's been a first time in a long time. And so yeah, we'll just have to see what happens next. I'm not sure what it's gonna be. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you guys wanna see that journey, what happens next, Hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out all the links down below because guys, we did a bunch of projects in this video. We did, you know, oil change, battery change. We checked out that relay for the intercooler pump, uh, tire pressure stuff. Yeah, just all that stuff. We'll have links for all that down below. And also make sure you check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. Any contribution you give there goes right back into the channel, the Corvette and the truck and the shop. Can't say the SS anymore, because obviously, guys, that car is gone. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.